Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 23 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. This time, we're going to have a lot of fun. We will cover anonymous functions, lambdas, map, filter, reduce, and I'm also going to present you with two new problems. So, lambda is going to be able to be used to create what we call anonymous functions. And lambda is like def whenever we're defining a function. But rather than assign the function to a name, it just returns it. And it's going to basically cover this basic format. You're going to type in lambda, and then you're going to have arguments, as many as you shall need. And because there is no name assigned, that's the reason why they are called anonymous functions. However, you can assign a lambda function to a name if you do need to. And mainly lambdas are going to be used whenever you need a small function but don't want to junk up your code with temporary function names that may cause conflicts. So let's just create one here. I can just call this sum1 equal to and then follow that up with lambda and then x and y and then you're going to follow that up with what you want to do with x and y. And there you go. That is a anonymous function. We can now come in here and do something like sum and follow that up with sum and 4 and 5. And if we run it, and that's sum 1. And if we run it, you can see we got the answer that we would be expecting. Let's do more complicated ones here. For example, we could come in here and use a ternary operator to see if someone can vote. So we can say can vote is equal to lambda age and then follow that up with true if age is greater than or equal to 18 else false. Then after that we can say can vote and call can vote and pass in say 16 for example and you can see that comes back as false. We'd also be able to create a list of functions so I'm going to call this power list equal to and then go lambda x and then take this to the power of 2 and then just keep on going so lambda again x colon x to the power of 3 and then finally throw that inside of there and lambda to the power of 4 now after we create that, we can run each function on a specific value. So we could say for func in power list colon and then print and pass in 4 inside of there. And you can see that works. All right, we're going to be able to do really cool things. You can also store lambdas in dictionaries. So we could do something like attack is equal to and we could say quick and then lambda after that colon print quick attack down here and let's just copy this paste it inside of there and then change this from quick to power and then we could do a power attack and then miss and they say something like the attack missed. So really neat types of things we can do here. And then to call it we could just say well in this situation what we're gonna do is just say attack and quick. Boom. But watch out doing things like that. It, can, it could turn into some confusing code. Just wanted to cover something neat though. You could get a random uh, dictionary as well for say our previous warrior objects that we worked with. So we could do something like import random. Obviously whenever you're doing imports keep them at the top of your code. Not here but I'm just doing this just to have everything all in the same place. So we can say attack and key and random choice and list attack keys 
and keys is going to return an iterable so we can convert it into a list and choice is going to pick a random value from that list so then we could say attack and attack key again attack missed quick attack so you can see how you can add some randomness to like a game or numerous other different things really neat stuff and now after covering all of that it's time for you to try to solve a problem like we've done before what I'd like you to do is to create a random list filled with the characters of either H and or T and those of course are going to represent heads or tails and then I want you to output the number of heads or tails that are generated and as per your sample output all it's going to do is print out heads and the number of heads as well as tails. Alright, so pause your video and give that a go. Otherwise, I'm going to solve it for you right now. Alright, so the very first thing I want to do is create a list. I'm going to call my flip list for flipping a coin. Then I want to populate my list with 100 heads as well as uh, tails. So I'm going to say 4i in range. And I'm going to say 1 through 101 because range doesn't give you the last value just like we've covered before. I'm then going to say flip list plus equal to random choice and I'm going to throw a head inside of there as well as a tail. Oops and I also need to import random. Accidentally deleted it last time. And then after we do that, all we need to do is output our results. So pretty quick, easy stuff. So we can say print and heads. Follow that with flip list count. I covered count in previous tutorials. And there we go. And if I wanted to get my tails, do pretty much exactly the same thing. I'll just change this to tails and change this to tails. And I spelled tails wrong. That's not good. Run it. And there you can say 49 and 51. Run it again. 52, 48, and so forth and so on. So hopefully you got that right. If you didn't, don't worry about it. And now what we're going to do is talk about map. Now map is going to allow us to execute a function on each item in a list. So let's take a look at why that can be so powerful. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call this 1, 2, 10 equal to range 1 through 11 and then I am going to create the function to pass into map so I'm going to call this double num gets a value and then it returns that value times 2 now what we can do with map is pass in the function and the list to generate a new list and print it out so we can say print list there's map, double num, 1, 2, 10, save it, run it, boom, and you can see it doubled all those values in our list. Let's do more complicated things. You could do the same thing with a lambda, so we could say print and list and map and then lambda x, oops, I think I put two spaces, yes and we could go x times 3 and then after that do 1 2 10 run it boom alright let's do more you could also perform calculations against multiple lists so I'm gonna call this a list is equal to list map lambda and let's pass in x and y this time and say x plus y what it's going to do is add the values in these lists to each other 3 and then add in another one and let's just have it be the same and then after we create that we can just say print a list boom 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 and there you can see it added those values alright so a whole bunch of things we're gonna do with lists and as the tutorial series continues I'm gonna do even more but now I want to talk about filter alright so while map executes functions on a list filter selects items from a list based on a function 
So let's say we wanted to get a list and print out the even values in that list. Well, to do that, we can go print list filter and then inside of here go lambda x and x modulus to equal to zero. Follow that up with range one and eleven. So in one line of code we're able to generate all of the even values inside of there. Okay, so now that we've covered all that it's time for another problem for you to solve. Alright, so this time I want you to try to find the multiples of 9 from a random 100 value list with values between 1 and 1000. So pause your video and give that a try, otherwise I'm going to solve it right now. Alright, so the very first thing I need to do is generate a random list. So let's go and create random list equal to, and I'll say list and random and I'm going to get this by calling random int from 1 through 1001 and I'll say for i in range and 100 okay so I got my list and now what I'm going to do is use modulus to find multiples of 9 by passing the random list to filter so I'm going to say print list filter lambda and x and then we're going to say x modulus 9 see if that is equal to 0 if it does then we will compare of course to random list run it whoops what did I do wrong oh I forgot to import random that's all alright so import random and there you can see there's the random list and it's automatically giving me all the modules or all of the values that are multiples of nine. Okay? Neat stuff. So now to finish off the tutorial, I'm going to cover reduce. All right. So reduce is kind of similar to map and filter, but instead it receives a list and returns a single result. So let's go and I'm going to call from, I'm going to use function tools to get reduce. So import reduce. Need to do that. Now what I want to do is add up the values in a list. So I'm going to say print and reduce and lambda x and y, x plus y. Then after I do that, I will generate my range. 1 through 5. Oh, have to spell reduce properly. <laughs> All right. Run it. And there you can see it went and added those values. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. And in the next video, I'm going to cover iterables and show how you can add iterable behaviors to your classes using magic methods. So like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise,